The other day I received this letter. They are crits. We added some great features to record books, but we kinda can't remember where we put them, or what they are, or what they do actually. Can you help us out? Recordbox is a powerful piece of DJ software, but some of its best features are buried so deep, it's like Pioneer doesn't even want us to know about them. I'm going to share five hidden features in Recordbox that will help you organize your library, play more creatively, and make you smell better. Looking at one playlist at a time, not good enough for you, Big Shot. There's a feature in Recordbox that lets you create, view, and sort up to four playlists at a time. This is great if you have a few bangers you play every time, or you just want to quickly dip into other playlists while you're keeping your main flow. First of all, we need to make sure playlist palette is enabled in preferences. So to do that, go up to the cog icon, click on view, then under layout, make sure playlist palette is ticked. Close this. You'll now see a little tiny table icon up here on the top right. Click on that and it'll open the playlist palettes. Above your tree view on the left, you'll see these four tiny, tiny little rectangles. By default, it's opened up on tag list. If you're using CDJs, this is where Recordbox will store the list of tracks that you've tagged. These three rectangles next to it are what we're interested in. These are groups of four different playlists that appear in the playlist palette section above your main playlist. By default, these will just be blank lists. There's a few different ways you can populate these palettes. The first and easiest is to just drag an existing playlist in. You can sort this playlist by track name or track order by clicking this tiny little icon at the top right. You can also remove this playlist using the same icon. As with any other playlist, you can also remove tracks. Bear in mind, this will affect the playlist itself, not just the playlist palette. The great thing about these is you can have multiple playlists open at one time. This means if you've got your main set playlist at the bottom, you can also dip into other playlists as necessary if you have moments of inspiration. One way I like to use playlist palettes is to keep track of tunes that went down particularly well. To do that, I simply drag them into a blank playlist. Then afterwards, I can give that playlist a name and remember them for next time. It's also a good way of keeping track of the stinkers. Save them in a turd playlist and trim them from your library afterwards. Do you ever find yourself playing the same track over and over without realizing it? Check <coughs> house. Oh, excuse me. You may already know you can customize the column headings in Recordbox. You can right click on the column headings and choose the different columns that you want to display against each track. But there's a particularly useful one I want to show you called DJ Play Count. It shows you how many times you've played a different track. I use this all the time to make sure I'm keeping my sets fresh and not just playing the same tune over and over. It's also a really good tool for removing weaker tracks from your library. Every so often I like to sort by the count and look at all the ones that I've never played. At this point, I can ask myself a question. Have I not played them because I've forgotten about them? Or have I not played them because I know they kind of suck? And it can really help clean up your library. If I have to expand another list in Recordbox, I'm gonna lose it. If you play music across streaming services, local files, external drives, it can be a real pain navigating to them in Recordbox. Fortunately, there's a way to save shortcuts to these. You'll find the shortcuts in record box behind the world's most timid little right pointing arrow over here on the left, just above your tree view. You can show and hide this using that arrow. This is a quick access panel where you can drag playlists, folders, or anything else that you can find in the tree view panel here. In my setup, I have tracks split between the streaming service Tidal and also tracks saved locally on my computer. Sometimes I want to deal with and manage these tracks separately. First of all, let's make sure everything we need is visible in this left-hand panel. Back into Preferences, go to View, Layout, and make sure any locations that you use your music for are checked here. In my case, it's Tidal and Explorer, which gives you access to the folders on your computer. To provide quick access to my Tidal library, I expand that, go into my collection, and then I want to drag in this playlist option into the shortcuts panel. Now, when I click on that, it's going to automatically expand all my playlists that I've got inside there. For the mathematically inclined amongst you, that saved me three clicks. Another really useful thing here is to actually add the search tracks function to the shortcuts as well. This can be handy if you get any requests or you suddenly have inspiration for a tune that you don't have in your library yet. You can also drag quick access to your USB drives, and if you have music saved locally, you can find that in the explore tree here. You can drag literally anything in this tree view panel into this left-hand section here. This feature is amazingly handy and has saved me loads of future arthritis. Have you ever been in a situation where you've queued up another track, but just as you're about to mix it in, you start having doubts? Or you just want a faster way of previewing tracks without having to load them to a deck first? If you don't see any waveforms on your playlist, right click on the column headings and choose preview you should now see waveforms appearing on your playlist. I usually like to drag this out so it's as big as possible. Along with just showing you where your cue points are in your tracks, you can also click on these waveforms to preview them in your headphones. By default, this will play through the headphones in your connected controller. To start the track playing, you simply click just to the left of it. You'll then see this little stop icon appear, which does pretty much what you'd guess. You can also click directly on the waveform itself to preview that particular part of a track. 
Another really great use for this is when you're tagging tracks in your library before you're set. Normally to preview tracks you'd have to drag them onto the deck and play them from there. But by using Waveform Preview you can do this a lot faster. For instance, if I'm looking to assign energy levels to new tracks that I've just added, I'd open the tags panel here and I've got my energy section. I can just click straight on the waveform, get an idea of the vibe of the track and tag it straight away. If you're doing this library prep, it's likely that you don't have your controller plugged into your laptop. So it's useful to be able to hear the output from this just from your laptop speakers. To do this, we need to change the output for the headphones. Go into preferences, go into audio, and then set the headphones output channel to output one and output two. This will basically pipe the preview through the same outputs you're using for your master output, AKA your speakers. Just make sure to change it back when you're done. If you wanna do this without having to use the mouse, there's a way to assign a keyboard shortcut. Go into Preferences, Keyboard, and then General. Oh look, Expanding Lists. Press the small plus icon next to Preview Start and Stop, and then map it to the key you want to use. I use a square bracket, but that's because I like 90 degree angles. Have you got a few seconds left on the track, but you still haven't decided what to play next? Recordbox has got a couple of ways it can help you. One of them is Related Tracks Playlists. Span the Related Tracks section. If you don't see it, let's go into Preferences again. Go to view and then make sure related tracks is selected. Now expand track suggestion. You'll see a couple of predefined playlists here. For these to work, you need to make sure the track that you've got loaded is set to the master. Recordbox will then populate these playlists automatically with tracks that match particular criteria. Era displays tracks that are from a similar year to the track you're currently playing. Mood suggests tracks in a similar key and speed. And Association looks at tracks with similar metadata like record label, artists, and other mystery tags. Beneath this, we've also got some related track options. Tracks that match the same BPM and key, tracks from the same genre in a 30 day period, and tracks from the same artist. Bear in mind, for these to work, you've got to have decent metadata for your tracks. It also helps if they've been analyzed so Recordbox knows what key they're in. If you don't know how to do that, you just right click on the track and do analyze. As a bonus tip, if you wanna have these tracks display on the right hand side, you can just right click on them and do display on sub panel. That'll pop them up open here so you can have it open while you browse other playlists. Related tracks playlists are just one way Recordbox can help you choose the next tune. There's another really cool way it can help you avoid last minute track selection panic. Watch this video next where I teach you about the Recordbox traffic light feature. It helps you mix your tracks harmonically in a really easy and visual way. 